All right, new batch of uh, album reviews. We're going to do things a little different this time around. Welcome to Everyone Who Does Music, where today we're going to be doing a album commission from Eduardo, as usual. Lovely dude. Go check him out. Avenging Marlin 4. Sure you have a picture here on the screen. Go check him out on Twitch. He's great. Uh, he has a batch of reviews for me to do. I think five total. And today we're looking at For All the Dogs by Drake, but we're doing the review just a little bit differently today. And we're going to be doing some reviews coming up, including commissions by him and outside of those commissions. And a new, if you've been here for a long time, returning lay. So my very first review I ever like sat down and actually wrote with the intention of posting on his channel that got posted was um, For All We Know of Heaven, For All We Something of Hell by Paris. Uh, again, picture on the screen, hopefully. That was the first review I ever posted on this channel. The way that I did that review was I went track by track and literally talked about every single track as much as I could. And back then I did that a couple times. I think I did it with uh, Shapeshifter by Knuckle Puck and a couple other albums, but it didn't really feel right. But I think nowadays, now that I'm getting into a lot more different genres and some artists I may not be able to uh, talk too critically on outside of like, yeah, it's okay, but it doesn't have X or Y. I think going back to a track-by-track -track formula for some reviews, such as this, might benefit things. So that's what we're doing today. There's also the fact that this album is like 20-plus songs, and I want to be sure that a bigger album, regardless of how I feel about the actual person, I fucking despise Drake as a musician um, and person because he does some fucky shit. I just want to be able to get through this album and give it the proper thoughts I think it needs. So some of these songs have more um, thought and words behind them. Other songs are just quick descriptions, but overall... I try to do my best to make sure that For All The Dogs got a review that sounded and felt critically sound. So let's do a little background on Drake. Drake has been releasing music since, I believe, just before 2010. Uh, I haven't really listened to him in a large, um, large amount since headlines. I didn't really enjoy views at all and anything past views. I just... It just felt kind of like overhyped for me. Your definition of quality aside, I feel like Drake is a person who, as soon as you mention his name, they're like, oh, he's the greatest, he's this, he's that, he's... There's multiple rappers and, of course, artists within multiple genres who get that distinction, but I feel like Drake is a victim of having that said about him several times over than just one sentence once you mention the genre. So here I am just to get into, get into this album. Um, I didn't really write the actual review script I usually read off of here pretty well. I just already wrote the descriptions for the tracks, so I tried to do my best for an intro there. Uh, let's get into the actual album. First track, Virginia Beach. Uh, this song didn't really feel too special. It was a okay opener. It's all right, but there's nothing really uh, special to say about it. It's a standard song and a good way to bring in the album, especially looking at some other songs from the first half of this album and of the first portion, because I have a lot more words to say about those songs to be continue on, such as Amen. This song is cheesy as fuck with no flow, if you ask me. It's just talking and saying shit that's generic with some of the worst vocalization I've heard in forever. And a lot of people, when I criticize a song like this that has Christian leaning or religious things, they're just like, oh, well, you're just shitting on because it's that. No. You can do God or religion focused music and tracks and make it good, but this is just two dudes in a studio talking with no effort. It'd be fine if it was labeled as like a skit or if it was intended as something else, something different than just an actual full song this early on in the album. It just takes you out of any inherent vibes or energy you might have had from the first track if you actually enjoyed that track. For the next track, Calling For You, there's a better sense of flow and overall direction, but too much reliance on the same word same sound line endings and it just utilizes a repeating beats and it, it might utilize it well enough in terms of relation to the song i think the dynamic between drake and 21 savage is pretty good but as you'll see later on throughout the album 21 savage is really just dominating the entirety of this song with drake seeming just very much the lesser less important part of it i think that you can have songs and albums if they're collaborative albums not that not this one but just saying in general where the guest does better than you. To consistently be outdone by several different guests on your album, it's not good. Next up is Fear of Heights. There's a solid introduction, but it's immediately derailed by horrifically bad lyrics in the chorus of its second part. It's a classic example of him one second being able to pull off decent bars with flow, precision, and lines that make me stop and nod, even if it's Drake, even if it's inherently cheesy and generic because it's Drake, I can kind of be like, okay. We got something going here, but it's immediately just diving into cringy shit once again. 
and I, it's easy to clown on Drake. There's all the memes you see about, like, you know, Drake's the kind of guy to blow on his food before he eats it, or whatever the fuck. But it's, wow, what was my hair doing? Hello? What? But I didn't realize just how true it was before really getting into some of the songs on this album, such as Here with Fear of Heights. Daylight is the first song on the album that actually provides all the individual pieces to what can make a good Drake song. There's repetition with effort put into it, similar lines that offer more than just one word over and over, and his usual self-confidence that feels worth rapping about for once. All these factors finally become consistent enough and they put come bleh, they're put together well enough, excuse me to actually be worth noting and worth making a song good. I've got to say the Adonis feature at the end completely pulls you out of it though, regardless of the sentimentality of having your son on a track. And while I understand the point is to have a sentimental ending there, the point is like Drake, you know, he loves his kid, he wants his kid to be on the uh, be on the album there, give him a little credit there. It's cool. It just like cri like critically, like I know it's crazy to criticize a kid's part in a song, but it's a review. Um, it just pulls you out of it at the end there. Otherwise, fantastic song. First Person Shooter, another example of the feature on a Drake track outperforming him 100% and then some. Not surprising in the comparison overall, but surprising since J. Cole is another rapper I look at as pretty simplistic or one that tries too hard and kind of ends up being cringy. It never hits me hard enough with his usual stuff to make me war to warrant me understanding the endless hype about him, or really the hype I see about either one of these people, but in comparison looking at it, J. Cole's lines versus Drake lines. I feel like J. Cole really just outdoes Drake once again, such as 21 Savage outdid him earlier in the album. Drake offers some better bars and manages to once again make his confidence palpable with my dick is bigger-esque lines, but once again, just guessed Drake. IDGAF, or I don't give a fuck, it's almost as disappointing a track as Amen, this time for having a couple lines come genuinely interesting before the flow is repeated with a seeming lack of creativity and effort as opposed to repetition being used for a benefit. Drake, when he tries, when he attempts to get something rolling here, repetition is his best weapon. But on songs like Amen and like this, it's his worst enemy. Combined with a sloppy beat that is just bass squared, listen to it, it's so bassy, with nothing beyond the pure impact of said bass making it stand out, before it hits the in-between sounds of some sort of video game death sound on loop. It's just unimpressive. For 7969 Santa, I talk a lot of shit about Drake for fun, but this song is genuinely boring, with nothing to offer outside of a funny little Snoop Dogg outro, which you see repeated uh, several times over. The Chief Keef feature is non-existent, and it was I'm only mentioning said non-existent feature because it was noted on some album credits on several websites I saw, with how he just comes in for quick lines on the chorus. The tease out touchdown feature is just him doing high notes while saying, I'm gonna go fuck some random bitches. Boys will be boys. I don't, I don't fuck with that. It's boring. It's silly. This track in general has the strength of a random skit, but just with no flavor and no substance. T tell you what, if Drake put out just a fuck it EP with songs like Amen and this song on it, where it's just him dicking around saying, eh, whatever, it'd be better for the sheer sense of sameness and the sheer sense of a, a feeling of cohesion. But here on a 20 plus song album, it doesn't work. Slimy Out comes in though and kind of saves things, being the genuinely good, the second genuinely good song on the album. It's solid as hell with a feature from, I've heard several people say her name. I'm just gonna say the, her name the way that I hear her the most. Don't stab me. It's a solid as hell feature from Za and the first one that Drake matches in terms of passionate lyricism and flow with a beat that even holds up and stays individual while matching the slowed down tune and vibe of the album as a whole. Getting into Bahamas Promise, I'd usually use a song like this to talk about how whiny Drake can be, but given the common themes throughout the album, it actually feels decent enough at this point and stage in the album and is one of the few ones I'd willingly listen to with its sadder vibe. Is it whiny? Yes, but Drake makes it an enjoyable listen with a familiar croon with a purpose, as opposed to him just whining and saying, well, I'm Drake, I got shot in the grassy. Tried Our Best comes in, and subject matter and general aspects of the song aside, what is Drake's obsession with having artists come on for quick callouts at the end of lines and crediting it like it's a straight-up feature again, looking at several websites I looked at, and they're credited as a full feature as opposed to just like a guest appearance. The song itself is a good track to use as a listener to look in on Drake's complex relationship with his surroundings from the outside as it gives a clear picture of his perceptions, wanting to experience things outside of the stress that comes with bringing someone along for the metaphorical ride of life in love. Screw the World comes in and this is a honest favorite. It's 
absolutely unique within the track list and offers up a nice break from the same this, same that, with a steady, hard-hitting beat behind the powerful, low-key lines from DJ Screw. This breaks up a lot of the monotony that comes within the first half of the album and hopefully sets a precedent for the rest of the album. You know, maybe there's a different vibe but beyond this. Spoiler alert, there is. Drew Picasso is next, and almost like Screw the World drew a direct line between two halves of the album, we have a banger song connecting more bars together through a conflict-filled relationship and showing off more of Drake's vulnerable side, both on the direct croon and self-exposure end of things, as well as him talking about how he could have done more. He could have gone in harder like he has before on both uh, direct relationships and artists in the rap game themselves, but he's choosing to withdraw and not perform a full frontal assault. I wasn't able to tell if it was fully intended, but the little comparison uh, being hinted at here between his relationship and love life versus his life within the rap game is very interesting. In a way, this track stands as a top pick and standout in the fact that Drake acknowledges this very fact. He's more than outspoken when he wants to be before and on this album, but holding back and still showing emotion and passion is a showing beacon that maybe he really is that dude. I still don't believe it, but he's making a good case for it. Members Only is a song that at this point just makes it beyond clear that For All the Dogs is an album about passion and intimacy, as is evident with emotional intimacy as well as physical on this track. One moment comparing the girl's dedication and infatuation with him to that of a clique or a gang, then getting more blatant with it talking about the entire city hearing her cry out during sex. It's a much better example than some of the things I see or hear, whether parody or not, with Drake's usually... Uh, with Drake usually coming across as corny or cliche. These are cliche elements regardless, but I don't know. They're delivered more smoothly. You got lines uh, where basically just whole city can hear us fucking, but he, with the song around that line, it comes off as inherently more smooth than him just saying it in what could be considered a crass way, if that makes sense. What would Pluto do? Um, the title to this track alone is a nice, well-meant dig to fellow rapper Future and his promiscuity towards women, and its connection to the themes at hand on here works as well. Um, as Drake tries to figure out how to get with a girl who's got her heart set on someone else, choosing to boast about his success in a very cliched manner, that while I don't prefer it in rap, as I feel it's kind of hollow, and it's very just, it was overdone in the 2010s, why do it even more and now? Uh, the repetitivity that he's known for feels more natural than earlier in the album here on this track. I've got to mention again that the interlude at this point in the album feels like a true definite divide between Drake half-assing it and uh, just actually giving a fuck now here on the album. He half-assed it, now he's pouring something, throwing it back, and dialing in for a true performance more akin to his previews work which stands as the best work I believe to be his best personality. Which I believe to be his best person. Sorry, this script must have been wrote, wrote at 2 a.m. I can't even talk about it. I'm stuttering. I'm suffering. Next, we have All the Parties. It's at this point in the album that I started to subconsciously realize, uh, while also reading up on tracks and having it directly confirmed for me, that For All the Dogs is a step back for Drake from his current sound, literally and metaphorically. The reason these songs sound so much better, the reason I can stand the album, as opposed to... Um, honestly, never mind, or the album that had God's plan on it, that might have been the same album, I'm not sure, is because Drake is going out of his way to ground himself and find ways to uh, make his new brand of rapping meld with older elements, even down to the contribution from Chief Keef, who I usually can't stand, but is perfect for the overall uh, over-eager flow. They usually get too tired too quick. He adds his addition into it, excuse me, I'm doing run-on sentences here, makes a decent listen. At this point, the album is coming up to a clean 50-50 damn near for features, either having the other rapper outdo Drake or them standing on an equal playing field, and it's at this point that Drake is actually keeping up with his contemporaries. ADM and Charlotte, this was the first song I actually replayed, because there's just no other words besides goddamn. That's the only way to describe this song, and it's not even, it's not often that I'm left with just a blatant expression coming off of a rap track, especially by Drake. This is pure flow from start to finish, and apparently part of an ongoing series of uh, the AMPM series. I don't recall the other tracks from previously listening to Drake back in the day, but it gives me a slightly harder push to actually listen to his catalog fully again. It's a pure, honest banger here, with not much else needed to be said, although I will ask anybody watching this video, is the AMPM series just like uh, separate songs following the same idea? Are they more just like border songs for his career or do they actually follow a series? Uh, help me out here. BBL Love is not 
as impressive an interlude up against the earlier track, Screw the World, this one serves as a quick bout of questioning the strength of love and its legitimacy while also celebrating it. It's a good continuation of the themes without going too hard on them as compared to a normal track. What strikes me odd at this point in the track list is why was this listed as an interlude if it has the qualities of being a full song uh, lengthwise, quality-wise, and everything, especially going up against the next track's length. Gently comes in, and you would think I would hate this type of song, but this takes all the ideas of getting pussy, being successful, yada yada, I'm a rapper and I'm doing it big, and does it in a way that comes across as actually enjoyable compared to moments where it feels cringy by comparison, like in 7969 Santa. It's Bad Bunny doing a lot of the big dick talk here, which by the way, apparently he has like a monster dong, good for him. And of course dropping absolute heat like he always does, but this reaffirms that while Drake sometimes can keep up with his co-conspirators, oftentimes he's falling behind them, even if it's two different sets of checks they're bringing to the table on one song. I usually dismiss a lot of tracks like this, but something about Bad Bunny makes it an undeniable banger. And honestly, it might just me being, you know, some fucking pasty white guy hearing a guy rapping a different language and going, oh boy, that's pretty good. I could just be impressed by language itself. And you know what? It's outside elements like that within a primarily English album that makes the track unique in its own sense. So it's a positive note on top of genuinely good bars. Rich Baby Daddy, even with Za providing some kind of flavor to the song, this is possibly the absolute worst fucking song on the album. Weirdly mid lyrics for this half of the album from Drake. Fucking awful part from Sexy Red. It's just the epitome of god awful noise with nothing behind it. If it was just Drake and Zah, I could chalk it up to Drake just, you know, phoning it in. His feature is doing better. But every time Sexy Red came on, that horrible, this is going to make me sound like I'm fucking 57, like I'm a boomer. But there's no other way for me to describe it. Call me a boomer, I'll take it. That horrible TikTok rap ask garbage. I fiz I literally physically recoiled. I was listening to it and I, I was doing some movements like throughout the album. Like, okay, it's pretty good. She came on, it's like, ah. Oh. Now we get into another late night. This late into the album, it's hard to find Drake bars that give anything good and unique because we've already visited a lot of the common themes within the album. But with a wealth of features, there's at least meant to be found in a moment like Lil Yachty in his verse. There's a big hip hop. It makes for a very cut and clean trap section, despite the inherent misogyny. Misogyny, my rap album? Who would've thought? Now we got away from home and we're taking a break from relationships, romantic struggles, and intimacy in a blatant and vague song that just tells the Drake story in a concise way. It's a retrospective journey from the lows to the highs and felt like a good penultimate track for an album that's been primarily focused on one major theme. I'm always a fan of come up tracks and rap projects, even if even it's from someone just overhyped, as I said. It's the come up story is always enjoyable. And then we get the final song, Polar Opposites. As good as this final song is, I feel like it could have traded places with Away From Home for a better way to cap things off. Drake talks about the connections he has with this girl, how they're all enigmatic and mysterious, and it's a further dive into the same thing we've seen time and time again. Again, uh, comparing the previous song, Away From Home, uh, that unique elements to the song's lack of unique elements. It would be a great track if we hadn't gotten glimpses of this exact same thing so many times over and over on the album. It's a good song overall, but being the final track, it gives it a sort of expectation that it just kind of falls flat on making four. Its stock value just drops dramatically overall when we've had so many attempts at telling the story already. In closing, the album does its job pretty perfectly. It tackles all the aspects of Drake's current love and intimacy life, from the highlights, raw sex and vibes, to the questioning and complicated moments spent up at night trying to figure out what to do. It also does a good job of showing the good and bad of Drake as a rapper, with the album coming in two very equally divided halves, as noted once again, with Screw the World kind of separating the first from the second half. And both halves are rem reminiscent of his original style inherently, but the second half shows us off much more explicitly and better by far. The first half of this album is rife with examples of the worst aspects of his rap game, but he makes up for it in the end. He can't erase the negative aspects, but he does his best to supplement middling moments with high impact features and some of the most impressive bars he's put out in his career. So, for these reasons, in a very long review, possibly my longest review I put out, in fucking years, on a Drake album, no less. Uh, For All the Dogs by Drake gets an 8 out of 10. And that's a review. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you enjoy longer videos like this? Do you like the more concise, quick ones? This was a long album, so even if I did it the normal review way, it still would have been pretty fucking long. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What you guys want to see me do next? We got a lot of 
reviews. I mean, a lot of reviews uh, recorded and on the way. So uh, thanks for sticking around. Have a good day. Stay hydrated. I'll see you next time. Thank you.